Hello and welcome to another video on PyQt here on the Mad Pony Interactive channel and in this video we're going to cover uh, button groups, event filters and subclassing. And to cover all that we're going to create an info system as, as you know in many apps when we hover uh, something instead of having a tooltip pop up we have like an info window uh, back down here that tells us the information about what we are hovering and so this is what we're going to be creating um, at the end of the tutorial you won't have this styled as I do but I will share um, I will share everything in the guest uh, I just want you to show you this is the styles that I created for it I should al also mention that with this system all you have to do is when you're prototyping in Qt Designer you can set a tooltip and this system is going to use that tooltip to place the information down there. Uh, now I didn't add a leave event to remove the information there but I'll leave that to you because you'll know how to do it by the end of this video. Okay let's get started by creating our UI here in Qt Designer and for this example I'm going to use a Q uh, widget because it's simpler and it doesn't have all the stuff that the main window has. We'll do use main window further on in more complicated stuff and I, I want to show you a lot of things about main window obviously but now we're going to use Q widget so create and straight away I'm going to save this into a folder that I created here called info system and this is where all our project our fi project files are going to be so I'm just going to call this main as main UI so main dot UI that's going to be our main UI So the first, first thing I'm going to create is our info area that's going to go down here. So I'll grab a horizontal layout and I'll place two labels in there. One saying info and the other, the other one is going to be a dynamic one where we're going to place our text. So right away I'm going to say this is info and then another label for which is our dynamic label. On this side this is going to be the dynamic label uh, I'll call it current info and it's important that I give an object name to, to this and I'll call it info LB alpha label I might as well call this layout info layout now I want my information to use as much space as possible so I'm gonna come here to the layout stretch and set the second item on the, the layout to be one so that it uses the most space as, as you can see info just went back for my buttons I know I'm gonna have four buttons so ideally we would use a grid layout and we're gonna pose we're gonna use tool buttons so one tool button inside of our grid layout another one another one and another one okay and just so that the naming convention is all the same I'm gonna do a underscore one for this first button so they all have one two three four and uh, and that's it okay so to put everything into place I'm gonna as you can see our form or widget doesn't have um, a layout yet so I'll, I'll right click here and we're gonna select the layout and I'm going to select a vertical layout in this vertical layout so if I scroll down here and uh, when I have form selected and uh, the layout doesn't show up yet so I'll select one of these guys and then select form again okay now we have the layout here so I'm going to do the same thing. I know that I want my buttons to be really big and this to be small. So my but my grid layout with the buttons is the first one. So I want the first one to use up as much space as possible. And that pushes my info down to the bottom. Now I want my buttons to use as much space as possible. So I'm going to click one and then hold control and click the other ones. So this way I can change their properties in one go. So size policy and we're going to come here and see which one is going to expand our buttons expanding on the horizontal and expanding here so now we got these huge buttons and if I do a, a control R just to check how everything resizes and perfect 
with all my buttons still selected I'm gonna right click on one of the buttons and I'm gonna choose assign to button group so that we create a new button group our button group now is down here okay so all these buttons belong to this button group now we can do button groups with uh, push buttons radio buttons and check boxes as well uh, for this example we're going with tool button but you should be aware of that the documentation on Q2 Q button group can help you out uh, if you're trying to do something that you're not seeing this example so I recommend you check that as well so we want all these guys to be checkable so I'm gonna select all of them and here in the Q abstract button uh, area here we're gonna choose checkable and we're gonna check one of them because we are inside of a button group as soon as I do that let's see uh, the behavior I do a control R there and the behavior is this so when I click one the other ones get deselected just to make things clearer when we're going to code I'm gonna call this group my button group <clears throat> and I might as well change the name of our widget to info system and just because I am getting really anal about this <laughs> I'll do this the button layout okay so let's start with uh, showing you all the versions and we haven't talked about subclassing yet and so we're gonna do that now I just uh, I'm gonna change these I just noticed that I made a mistake by calling this main dot UI so I'm gonna change that because I want to have main pi to be the main application so I'm just gonna do a save as here in Qt designer really quickly and I'm gonna call this main underscore UI okay so that we are all in the same page right okay so now I have info system I got main dot uh, GUI.UI and I will have main GUI.py which will be the compiled version. So let's create then uh, a file here. The main, let's save this as main main.py inside of info system. Okay. Okay, now we can get started. Okay, so I just pasted some code here and we're gonna go over what everything does. And so far we haven't been using, um, we haven't been using this and we haven't been doing any subclassing. And this is the recommended format to it. The, way, the reason I haven't started with this is to make sure that you understand, uh, to, to make everything simple, as simple as possible, and that you understand that you don't actually need to do this and and we're sure of it because we already created an application for like that in the QRC example okay so up here we start by importing all the necessary stuff to create a window uh, in this case it's a widget it's not a Q main window but it still throws out a, a window and you'll see that in a second so we start we, we create a Python class and in this case we called it app we could call it anything we like and we're subclassing the Q widget. Okay. What that means is that in here, inside this class, I have access to all the methods of Q widget. So if you are, if you know Python, you know this. And then we can initialize it using super. And this is usually the preferred method. This is the method that most people use. I don't find it that appealing because then if I change my app name, I got to change my app name here and I'll have to use this every time I'm overwriting a, a method or an event so usually what I do is I, I do this so I initialize Q widget the class the, the class Q widget by doing this dot in itself and that works as well and I can show you right away that uh, super works and if I use Q widget this works as well Okay, if you guys, you, I, I'm not a big expert. I mean, I know how to make things work, and that's why I'm doing these tutorials. But if any of you guys are really experts and you know that uh, there's advantages to this, please let me know in the comments section below. I like to, to use it like this because it's cleaner. And I can actually use different uh, classes. So I could say that, you know what, I want to subclass this from another class. And I would place another class here and do the same thing for that other class, okay, with that name, right? So I'm just, <laughs> I'm using the same class here, but you, you get the picture. I could uh, initiate another class there. Now, any arguments that I place here in my 
init function, any arguments, and I can use args and quarks as well here if I like, and, and quarks, whatever. Any, any, any stuff that goes in here will be accepted when I place it in here. So if I place an argument here, uh, I don't know, maybe a string, it, this would catch that argument and then I can use it here uh, inside of the, the init function. Also, this is usually used, for example, QWidget. QWidget takes a parent, and if I look at the documentation right here, you can see that in QWidget, it takes a parent as none. So I can place a parent, and it also takes window flags. So if I wanted to pass those arguments in, I would, uh, here in my init, I could say parent equals none. And here, when I initiate my app, I could uh, give it a parent, which would be a Q widget. And down here, I would, to make sure that that argument would pass into the to the to the class that we're subclassing, I would put parent in there. Okay. And so this this is gonna give us the the same result, just an empty window, because we're not gonna need it. And I like I like to keep keep things simple. I'm gonna clear that parent out of there. If you're not familiar with Python, uh, this statement here that says if name equals main, it means that this code is only going to run when we run this file directly. If we try to import this file, this code right down here in this statement, this would not run. And then I'm just saying start the queue application, uh, and the queue application uh, get a window and show the window. Now the show window, I could use, I could do that here. I could do that in the init self show okay and we get the same result so when the loop ends when we exit uh, the the application the app uh, uh, does the um, well we exit the app as well and and that's basically quitting uh, okay I think you get the picture and just to quickly show you on PyQt6, because we're doing Py, we've been doing PySide, it's exactly the same thing, okay? So as we've seen here in, the, in our playlist, in our previous video, in, uh, here in PyQt images and QRC files, when you try to uh, use uh, the loading the UI from, to memory, and then trying to create an application for package distribution, uh, we can do that using for, for the PySide. So uh, in this example, I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use here the compiler. I'm going to transform this into a, a file, uh, a Py file, the, and our GUI into a file, and then import it using this system. This is so that we don't have to go into the command line because uh, we have this Andy uh, guest that I provided to you guys, and you can see that in our other video on Py, uh, PySide Qt Designer UI files. So if you haven't checked that, check that, please. Uh, and the, what I'm going to do here is instead of uh, importing, uh, placing these here, I'm going to place these into a file so that for future uh, tutorials, we can just grab that file and import that file. So very quickly, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to save this file in here. And I'm, I'm going to call it uh, PySite. Six loader, so that we can grab that file. And I'm, I'm just going to paste that code in here. The gist code, I'll, pl uh, I'll place it in here, save that, and now every time I need that file in a project, I can just grab it. So grab that file, copy that, and place it into here our info system. So basically, what I'm doing is from that file, I'm importing that class, and now I can use that class. So for when we're using PySite, we'll be doing that. We'll be importing that class, and we're going to be compiling the file, compiling the main UI file into a main UE.py file so that we can later on import it. For PyQt, uh, we're going to have to go into the command line because we don't have something like that. So for every time I ch change my UI, I'm going to have to do this. So I guess I'll use this for future examples for future tutorials. Of course, when you go into production, we can just, uh, when you're trying to create an application from this, so for distribution, we can just comment this out and we're set to go. Okay, so let's just run this once so that we create the file. Okay, there you go. 
now we got that file right there and if I open it up you can see it's importing everything we need and UI info system is the name that we gave to the, our uh, widget so now in here all we have to do is say self UI so our object UI is going to be equal to main GUI which is what we're importing this file and in this file we got the UI info system so we'll say dot UI info systems starting that uh, that widget and then we do a setup UI which is basically this and it's asking for self uh, for info system and that's going to be self uh, in other words this class so that's every time we want to access uh, our GUI we can do self UI dot something in our GUI and here we are set to go if you're still wondering how to do the uh, the PyQt 6 version then I wouldn't need any of these codes I would import like this but I would have to paste this code into my command line so I could do right click here open containing folder CMD and here I would paste that code press enter and now if I open that file you can see that now we're using PyQt okay so the process would be the same if I run it here we go same thing okay guys for this I'll use PySide for now okay let's do stuff with our button group and remember the name of our button group was my button group here in the Qt designer so going back to code I can access that button group here by saying self UI dot by button group now button groups offer us quite a few functions we have a button clicked pressed and released which means that we can connect to these events and figure out which button was clicked released or pressed we also have this handy one that is button toggled which give us the gives us the the button itself and a boolean saying that is pressed or not okay uh, down here we also have the events ID clicked pressed released and toggled and the difference is that this one instead of giving us the button these guys give us an integer which is the button ID so you can set button ID uh, using the function uh, set button I set ID so using the button and the ID here for this project we are gonna want to have the button because we want to access the tooltip of the button I'm gonna use button clicked which is very similar to button released okay so the clicked is when it's pressed and then released so we'll, we'll use button clicked so I'm gonna be lazy and I'm gonna copy this out and we know that the argument is the button itself so back in in my code I'll use button clicked I'm gonna connect to that signal and we're gonna pass in a function now in I could have my function in here saying uh, define a function here and then use that like like so but I, I prefer to have things organized so I will create one down here and the argument that we're gonna receive from that it's gonna be the button itself so I'll just say button here and for now I'm gonna pass here in here the way I'm gonna connect that method is by doing self because this is a class it's a method from the class it's not in the init so I'll say self dot button clicked so just to quickly see what happens if I do a print statement here for the button and I run this app every time I click a button you can see that it shows up in there so to make sure we click in the right button I can go back into cute designer and name these buttons by double clicking and and doing that so save that go back and now of course let's get the text so we know we're in the right doing the right thing okay okay so I get a, a error there and let's see what the error is okay the error is that app object has no attribute text this is because I was silly and I didn't pass the first argument which is self okay so every every function every uh, method that you do for the class needs the self argument and only then the arguments that are passed from the functions that are called so that was silly of me and now we should have as you can see there the text of the buttons 
So you can see how flexible a button group can be and how, how much code it can save you. I'm quickly going to write down the code that you would need if you didn't have the button group and you had all the, those buttons separated. Okay, so if I didn't have the button group, I would have to do something like this. The same result, but to, I would have to connect, uh, and you can see there's a different functions here. I would have to do, do something like that. Of course, I could go the lambda way, and I'm going to show you that as well. And I'm showing it because these might become very handy in the future. So lambda, the way it works is that you say lambda, and uh, and then you would you can pass in arguments to the function that you're calling. So we still have a function called button clicked that takes an argument that is a button. So we're doing that. We're passing in the button itself, and we have the same result as we had with the button group, only still a lot more code. Okay. So lambda, that's the way a lambda works, and we're going to use it in the future for sure. But now you can see how, how flexible a button group is and how less code we can write with it. So back to what we had initially, uh, button text is not really what we're going to be interested with in. What we're going to be interested in is the tooltip. And if I run this now, because I haven't set any tooltips, I won't get any anything happening here. Okay, no print, just an empty print as you can see. So let's set up the tooltips. So I'll just say button one. I'll call it info. Okay, and I'll do this for all the buttons. Okay, so button one, button two, you can see here button info on the tooltip. I'll save that and if I go back into my code and now I run it, let me just make this bigger so we can see it. If I run it and I press I can see that that's the tooltip. So yes when we print out a tooltip it's gonna give us that. Obviously we don't want the tooltip when we press it and uh, because we're using this system we don't want to see the tooltip when you when we hover one of these buttons. So for that, we're gonna new use um, event filters. So we're gonna install an event filter and use that instead for when we hover the button, we can catch that event. Now, another way of doing this would be obviously to subclass a button and uh, access the, the mouse move event there. But we're not doing that because we're going to be flexible using our uh, Qt designer more often. So uh, let's let's do the so let's install the event filter then. Okay, because I'm going to need to install an event filter for each one of them, uh, I'll just create a new initializing fu function here. Okay, and now I'm going to create that function. And now I can paste the code that I had up there in here, and we can see that we have the same result. Now for every item that we want an event filter to be installed, we have to uh, grab that item and then say install event filter, and we can say self as uh, the event filter parent. But this is, this is not going to do anything until we have actually have an event filter. So event filters are, are come from Q object. So anything that in inherits from Q object has this functionality of the, the event filter. So what we're doing here is that we're overwriting the event filter, but then we are actually returning the event filter back to Q widget. So this way any other class that inherits from app, for example, can have event filters as well. And this uh, goes into the, to the app. Now I'm only doing a print object event, so that's the arguments that we get in event filter. And the only thing, and the only button that has an event filter installed is button one, as you can see here. We'll have to install the event filter for each in every single button. But let's see what this does for us. Okay, so you can see that these buttons don't output anything, but moving my mouse over the the button who has an event filter is giving me a bunch of uh, events down there, including the help event. Well, that, that, that doesn't help me a lot, but what does help me is if I get the event type like this. So now if I do a F7 here, now all I get is the event type. So 
as you can see we got uh, enter leave over I even have a click like mouth let me show you <laughs> mouse press okay and uh, and yeah so if I let my mouse there you can see that the event we're looking for is the tooltip event so in order to filter out events we can use this statement if event dot type equals and then we say it's a queue event right so as we can have here as we can see here and it belongs to queue to car I'm gonna get an error and that's because we don't have queue event so I have to import queue event so from PySight QT, Qt core import queue event and now I can ask this question so what this is is, is basically it's a boolean and that's what we've been looking at so this way I can filter out only the tooltip event because that's the one we are interested for this um, tutorial and of course you, you saw right there that we can get hoover events with this as well so now I so we only have an output there when it's a tooltip. Actually, I'm being silly because we want the, the information to display as soon as we hover the button. And we don't want the tooltip to trigger. So uh, yes, we're going to need the tooltip, but we're also going to use the hover enter event or the enter event. OK, so I'm interested in the enter event as well. And I can run the code here now. So now we also have an enter event right there so when we enter we want our info to give us the tooltip so that we can set the tooltip on Qt designer and use this to do that and now when the tooltip jumps up uh, pops up we don't want it here so that's why we are catching that tooltip event as well so back here in Qt designer we remember we call this info label to the label that is going to display the info so we're going to catch that here by going into the UI which is the GUI and saying info label and what we're gonna do we're gonna set text on this label and the text that we want would be the tool button one in this case of course we're gonna do a more dynamic way a more dynamic approach to this but we would get the tooltip of that button and now when I over this you see that button one info shows up in there so the proper way to do this let's do that so first and foremost we have this object here and what is the object is the button so if I place my object there and run this we get the same button one info the other ones don't work because I only installed a but uh, an event filter on button one so to install event filter on all of the buttons we can grab our group here and this is going to give us all the buttons that are inside of the group. So if we iterate over it, we can do stuff to all of the buttons at once. So I say for button in self UI buttons and instead of installing the event filter on just one button, I can install it in all of the buttons and just like so. We can even do a, I mean a one liner like that. So and now we're installing an event filter for button itself UI for every button in the in the button group. Now the result would be button two info, button one info, as you can see down here, button four info. Okay. Now we still gotta fix the issue where we got that popping up. So and for that, all we have to do to stop the tooltip from popping up is we catch that event here and we return true. Returning true is just gonna stop. Uh, the chain of events from propagating which means that it's not going to do the it's not going to let it do the events it's not going to come down here and do the events so even if I leave my mouse there for 10 minutes the tooltip is never going to show up and we still have info right there for each one of our buttons okay and that concludes this tutorial on creating a custom info system and I'll see you in the next video